All right, this is the second time I'm making a pass at this video. The first time uh, didn't come out as well as I hoped uh, because it's a fairly sensitive topic. This is the second amplifier I've received for work that was previously in the hands of a particular uh, internet famous Los Angeles amp tech. I'll say no more, I'll offer no clues, but suffice it to say that I have some nits to pick. Um, the work this person did is fine. It's totally fine. However, if you're going to pay a premium for service and you're going to be humping around a vintage amp from stage to stage and expect it to live a long and happy life in your travels then you should get a little more for your money. I'm going to pick some nits. So, and, and this is not just about anyone in particular. It's just about maybe the industry uh, as it sits. And I would say maybe it's more about um, not the tech's ability, but maybe, uh, technically speaking, but maybe it's about their ability to uh, handle, uh, handle a workload if that makes any sense. Oh, load balancing for you IT guys. So, um, maybe no fancy zooms on this one. Let's get into it. Uh, back to the nuts and bolts. You can't see it here, but this is a brown control panel, brown faceplate in the vernacular. Um, why do I think it's a 61? It says patent pending there. It says base right there. Um, got the presence knob. The bias arrangement has two filter nodes separated by what should be ostensibly, and it's not here, a 10K decoupling resistor. That's not a dropping resistor. Uh, for you guys out there uh, who don't know, 10K is the minimal value of resistance that should be used to decouple one filter node from the next. That's bare minimum. Not meant for dropping voltages to get along with a particular preamp tube. Um, Though it could be uh, used for that as well. It could be a dual purpose type arrangement um, in conjunction with your um, with, with your plate supply, obviously, your, your plate load resistors. Um, <clears throat> and then on the back side, you got the Made in Fullerton um, paper interleaved choke here. And, I'm, and paper leaved, i put transformers are my favorite, by the way. Um, the the paper in, interleaved uh, choke here is dated to 1961, as are several of these pots, the ones that haven't been replaced. This out oh, this power transformer is actually for the 5F6A reissue. This is a, a Tweed Baseman spec power transformer, so uh, the the plate volts will not be uh, what they should be for the 6G6 circuit. So keep that in mind. Uh, the output transformer is original. I don't know if I covered that before. Um, this amp was modified by the aforementioned tech in a couple of ways. The base channel, channel, what um, most of the guys with the silver or black panel amps will call the normal channel, um, looks like it's been converted to 5F6A specs. Uh, the normal channel looks untouched. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, this, no, oh, okay, screw it, I'm going to zoom in. This is a dual gang pot. What's it doing? It's, it's being used as a master volume. And I can tell because there are no grid leak resistors strapped across the top that it's a type two. Should have done a type four. Why? Because if the resistive element in this fails, then what's gonna happen? You lose your bias, you, then you lose your power tubes, then you probably, and hopefully not, will lose your old, incredibly expensive, original, vintage output transformer. So, let that sink in. That's why you should not use the Type 2. If you're gonna, if you're gonna find yourself you know, waxing technical, uh, thumbing through some greasy, pages of the uh, Gerald Weber handbook or the old Ken Fisher pages, train wreck pages, then at least, at least strap on a couple resistors for safety's sake. And it improves the taper of the pot. So why would you not do that? The pots, it's dual ganged. 
Um, what else don't I like? Don't just jab the leads through the sockets here and don't even give it a cursory 90 degree bend before you expect the solder to act like super glue. It doesn't work like that. Oh, buddy, what did you make? You're on, you're on, you're going to be on the internet. What is this, buddy? Daddy, can you put that up there? I will put it up there. Can you explain to everyone what this is? It's something, it, it's a house. Mm. And, and, and this is the, the, the light. And this is the garage. Dude, that's beautiful. And, and this is the fence right here. Dude. And, the, and this is a thing to put the pot. That's nice. And what do we have here? This looks very technical, buddy. I like this. What are we looking at here? The, the battery to make it work, and it's okay. a computer. I see it. And, and this is the thing to make it small and big. This is to make it hot or cold. Dude, that's super cool. Now you can put it up there. Daddy. Okay, thank you very much. Put it up there. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, I need to continue this video, and you can hang out here, okay? Daddy, yes. Oh, I'm gonna put it up there for you. To make it cooler. <laughs> okay. Daddy, and, and, and up there is the kids' playhouse. Okay. The, the kids' playhouse is that, is that yellow thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Look at this. I gotta go back to work. All right. And on that note, and here's the one of the offending joints you could probably see behind this wire right there. Come on. That's gonna break. Okay. Don't put a safety ground on, on a lug. This is a nice steel chassis. Put it on a chassis like this one. And, and when you finish doing this one, whoever replaced this power transformer, just get rid of that nasty flux, dude. So, oh, thanks for removing the death cap. Um, another thing that makes this unreliable for use on, on stage and hell in a studio there, there's no safety mechanism here on this rectifier tube socket since this unloaded will be about 500 volts your one in four 007 diode is not going to do here you're going to want to use the 5408s and i use a string of them on each side of the of this rectifier tube. Now I can tell you what's gonna end up happening, and since we're discussing safety here, is on a lug, I will use this lug to put a terminal strip, but not for a ground. I'm gonna house those uh, 5408s there for use as uh, backup rectifier diodes. Um, and, and as many have said before, uh, that will take over the, the duties of the tube rectifier should it fail, uh, but what you will notice is a decrease in headroom. That's first off. You're not getting a uh, full wave quasi bridge or anything out of it. Um, you're literally going to get the bare minimal amount of rectification to keep this thing playing. You're going to notice a brownout type of a situation there. So just keep that in mind. And to address uh, the, the elephant in the room and what should not be a controversial topic. Uh, while I love these blue moldies here. And, and they're known for not leaking and not failing. I still pop an end off and check for leakage. Same thing with these Astrons. However, these are infamous for leaking. So th this is a critical position. Again, the whole catastrophic chain of events happens should these fail. Lose your power tubes, possibly your output transformer. It's, it's a bad scenario. Get rid of these guys. You're not going to notice any degradation in tone you're not going to lose any vintage flair by moving to a, a a 150 or an orange drop it's it's not gonna be any sort of a tangible or noticeable difference regardless of how sensitive you think your hearing is because i'm that guy who thinks his hearing is that sensitive so let's move forward and i'll make a strong recommendation that we get these guys out of here and i will test them so at least uh, you'll know if they're leaking now at voltage, um, and even if they're not, I'm still going to make a strong recommendation to get these guys out of here. These guys are, wow, how old is that? 60, you're looking at, wow, 40, these are 60 year old caps, got to get these guys out of here. The one, the ones here, and, and 
in the tone stack, that's fine. Leave them in there. Leave them in there and we'll see what happens. You can roll the dice on these guys, but but not these. And you want to leave the one in a negative, uh, pull a negative feedback duties, that's fine. That's fine. You can leave that guy in there. So uh, Stevie, again, um, you guys um, may not know, but Stevie is an awesome local player who actually plays around the region. So I should preface it with that. He wants to get a little more juicy overdrive, uh, something that this amp probably had at one point and lost along the way. So we're going to reclaim that, um, but we're not going to do it by adding a bunch of push-pull switches or turning this thing into a, a Mesa Boogie or, or the like. We're going to gently encourage this amp to give up what it has, what it's got left on the table. Um, we're going to encourage some earlier breakup and overdrive and more of it. Um, we're going to play around with screen resistance to get some, some more compression and sustain that little juicy, squishy feel under the fingers that makes lead so much fun to, to play on these things. And we'll get this thing set up correctly. Now, did the prior tech do a good job? Yeah, they did. But was it good enough? I don't think so. I think it's fine for a bedroom amp. This is not something that I would want to take on a road with me or even in the studio. So, update soon. And we'll switch over to um, a little clip of, uh, of the cab showing some more uh, cool evidence of, of this thing most likely being a 61. All right, again, pardon the obscene angle and awful lighting. Stevie, that's just a, actually, Tolex repair I made last night. It's probably ready to go now. Look at the model designation. Where's my chopstick? 5F6A. That's a big clue that this is a 61. They were just using up the remainder of these old Tweed Baseman tube charts. You didn't see that in 62. At least I'm led to believe that based upon uh, the research. So that makes this an incredibly interesting amp among all the other incredibly interesting amps that you brought over here, Steve. So I appreciate that, dude. Not one of the most sexy shots I've ever done. And I, I could see that I need to make a few more Tolex repairs and um, vacuum out some little friendly guys. But I wanted to make a quick observation for some of you cats out there that haven't encountered this yet. What is that? Well, we know what it's for. It's it's for the ca Faraday cage effect. But what is it? This is screen door material. What? Yeah. This is the material that they would put on window and door screens back in the old days. And Leo just... <laughs> Leo just um, saw... Uh, I guess saw a, a, a cheap supply of this stuff and he used it for that purpose. Pretty crafty, huh? Uh, one of the cool parts of uh, living, I, I live about 10 minutes away from the old Fender factory off of Harbor in Fullerton, California. And um, one of the cool things about working on these old Fender amps is sometimes you'll get the old um, factory service stamps on the back of the chassis. Um, and you don't see that in other states. Amps that were circulated in other states, that is, in other countries. Uh, that's one of the cool things. Um, another thing is, um, when you're driving around there, you know, Randy Bravo, I'm looking at you, buddy. When you're driving around there, um, you get a good sense of what it was that Leo had available at the time. Because a lot of the old places are still around. There are old hardware stores that are still around from well before his time. Over at, uh, well before Fender. And, and you know, just walking down there, that you were walking the same aisles that maybe him or some of his crew were walking down back in the day. And they probably came across a roll of this stuff and, and grabbed, you know, when they were doing the old steel guitar amps, old uh, lap steels or what have you, and the old tweeds, 
all the old chassis hardware and cabinet hardware just came from there. And they were at like local upholstery shops getting the, the coverings and all the grill cloths and all that stuff. How cool is that? That old factory is now a furniture store, which is kind of fitting. And actually, I think they're a furniture manufacturer. Randy, we're, we're going to have to get together and film this, buddy. Like, it, you guys don't know Randy Bravo yet, but you will. He's, um, he's local to Fullerton, California, and the dude has more institutional knowledge of vintage fender than anyone I know, like from the operations aspect, um, shop locations and things of that nature, uh, really interesting things. And I, th I think it would be a really cool segment or just maybe a, a really cool uh, video. Just, just Randy, we got to hang out and do this, dude. I know we talked about it, but go look at the old mural, the whole thing, and you can give us a tour. Plus he has really cool tattoos. And is a great guitar player. Bye.